Good afternoon. Glad you could make it out tonight to watch this video. Um, you know, I wanted to go on and throw this out there. I titled this, Is Anybody There? Okay, sometimes I feel like we feel like there's nobody there listening to us at times. And, you know, I, I have a confession to make before I start off here. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm talking on the phone with somebody, and you know how it is, somebody just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And uh, sometimes I have a tendency to stop listening, um, just to be honest with you. Um, and I know that's not the greatest thing of me, but I just wanted to be honest with you and tell you that, you know, sometimes I don't always listen the best. And, you know, sometimes it's like this, though, whenever we're talking to God. Uh, sometimes, you know, we keep asking Him for something or we keep praying for something and it just never happens. And it makes us wonder, is God ignoring me? Is God not listening to me? Can God not hear me? Um, you know, and it's easy to think that at times. But the truth is, God is always listening to us. God never turns His ear on us. God can always hear us. And let's read a little bit of Scripture on that. Psalms 55, 16 through 17 says this, As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and He hears my voice. So we know, based on Scripture, that God is always listening to us. But when he doesn't do what I ask him to do, it kind of feels like he's not listening to me, actually. Well, God always hears us, uh, but his answer isn't always exactly what I want to hear. Okay, God's not always going to answer to make me happy at the moment. You see, God always answers our prayers and our requests in three different ways. Okay? Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says be patient. Okay? And, you know, the good thing about it, though, is that God always knows what's best for us. You know, He can see past now. It seems like we've just got this tunnel vision to where we can see right now what's going on in our life. This is what's best for me. I know it. God knows better than that. God doesn't just see us right now, but God sees down the road. God knows my future. God knows what's best for me, not necessarily now, but in the long run. And I really appreciate that. So maybe whenever God answers us with a no, it's because He has something better for us. Or maybe He's keeping us out of trouble. Or maybe He's getting us to where we need to be for the future. Okay? And, you know, I wanted to throw this out there at you. If you tuned in last week, you heard about my story about, you know, how I didn't make it to play college sports and how that really devastated me. But, you know, I prayed so hard and I worked so hard to be that athlete, but God told me no. Okay? And like I said, I was devastated at the time, but... Instead, I ended up teaching and youth ministering, and, and, you know, I really enjoy it. And I think I'm in a much better place than I would have been if I had have stuck with that, and I actually had have made it to be a college athlete. You know, God knew what was best for me, though. At the time, I was like, man, this is what I need to be doing. This is what I want to do. But God said, no, no, Andrew, you don't. This is not what you want right now. I'm more concerned about down the road and what, where you need to be for me in my kingdom. Let's look at Scripture, okay? Let's look at a time whenever God told someone no in Scripture. All through Scripture we see that people pray, people ask God for things, but you know what? God's consistent. He's either going to say yes, no, or be patient. And this is an example of whenever He said no. We go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. And here the Scriptures say this, Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. This is Paul speaking. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It says here that the Lord allowed Paul to have a thorn in his flesh. And Paul earnestly prayed to him three separate times, God, please take this from me. God, please take this from me. God, please take this from me. And God said no. Okay, I'm sure Paul was very upset at the time. I would have been very upset. If, if, you know, I'm earnestly praying for something that I need and God keeps saying no and I can't figure out why, but Paul comes to terms with it and he realizes that this is for God's glory. He realizes that there's a reason that God is allowing this to happen and not taking it from him. And so Paul accepted it. And that's a great example of what we should do. We need to understand that just because we want something doesn't mean it's what's best for us. 
Let's look at another example of when God said yes. This time we're going to look in Jonah. Jonah chapter 2, verses, uh, verse 10 is what I'll end up reading, but I want to kind of give you a little preview of it. You know, Jonah, we all know the story of Jonah. Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh. He ends up going to Tarshish. A whale or a great fish, excuse me, a great fish comes and swallows him whenever the sailors throw him overboard. While Jonah's in the belly of this great fish, he prays to the Lord and he asks for another chance. And God gives him that. So um, we pick up there in Jonah chapter 2 verse 10. It says, And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Okay, So Jonah's going the opposite way of where he needs to go. He needs to be going to Nineveh. He's going the other way. The sailors throw him overboard. A great fish eats him and takes him all the way up to the beaches at Nineveh. Jonah was in the belly of that great fish, and he prayed to God. He prayed for another chance. He prayed that God would forgive him and allow him a chance to go to Nineveh and do as God said. And you know what? God said yes. God said, you got it, Jonah. And uh, I think, kind of think Jonah probably regretted that one for just a second because the, the fish actually threw him up, and I'm sure that was a terrible experience. Uh, sounds gross to me. And let's look at a time whenever God actually said, wait, okay, be patient. And that's in Genesis 15.5. Now, we know Father Abraham, and we know that Father Abraham had many sons, thanks to the song. But Father Abraham didn't always have many sons. As a matter of fact, Father Abraham didn't have any children for a very, very long time. Okay, He actually didn't have any uh, up until this point. He's talking to God here, and I want to read that for us. Genesis 15, 5 says this. God took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So God takes Abraham outside and he says, Listen, Abraham, he says, I want you to count all these stars. Have you ever tried that? You ought to try that some night. Go out and try to count all the stars. There's too many to count. You can't count them all. God said, Abraham, you're going to have as many descendants as there are stars in the sky. And Abraham, if I'm Abraham, I'm going to be looking at God like, What are you talking about? I don't even have a son. I don't even have a child. How can I have all these descendants? And God's answer was wait. Abraham and his wife prayed for a son. They prayed for an offspring. But God kept telling them to wait. And Abraham had to wait until he was actually 100 years old before he got his first son. So that was a good example of whenever God said, you know what? You'll get it, but you have to be patient and you have to wait. The bottom line of this lesson is that whenever you pray for something, God is always going to listen to you. There's no time that God is going to turn his back on you and not listen to what you have to pray for or to ask for. But he's not always going to answer exactly how you want him to. Just because I really want something doesn't mean it's what's best for me. God's always going to say yes, no, or be patient. And we need to learn from that. Just because God tells us no doesn't mean we need to get upset and throw a fit. We need to understand that God knows what's best for us down the line. And he's thinking about us and our well-being. Let's pray about this. Lord, thank you for your scripture. Thank you that we can dig into it and we can learn from it, Father. And we can learn things that apply to our lives, God. Lord, sometimes we can feel like we're praying, but we feel like you're not listening, Lord. And I thank you that we can learn from scripture that that's not true, God. You're always listening to us and you always care about what we have to say, Father. But we need to understand and respect that you're going to say three things, one of three things. You're going to say yes, no, or be patient. And God, I just pray that you would help us to, to remember that whenever we ask for things, Lord, because... Sometimes we ask for things, but we really don't know that that's not what we need. But you know that, and I appreciate that, Father. Lord, I thank you that you love us that much, Lord. You love us so much that you know what's good for us and what's not good for us, Lord. Your plan is awesome, and Lord, just help us to buy in and believe uh, in what you have in store for us. Lord, I thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is everything to us, Lord, and I just thank you that he came down to this earth and he set the ultimate example of how we need to live, and I just pray that we would follow him to the best of our abilities. And Lord, I also pray that you would help us to allow him to save us, Lord, so that we can all be in heaven one day and celebrate together. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's all this I ask in your name. Amen.